chapter 7 verse number 102 and we are looking at how the various pramanas are uh, ineffective to prove anything and here it says we are looking at sant nyaneshwar maharaj now proceeds to demolish the various authorities of knowledge that have been used for establishing ignorance one by one step by step before we saw that all the pramanas were had become null and void to prove existent reality and now the same thing the pramanas will become null and void to prove the existence of ignorance they could not prove reality because they are limited the pramanas are objective and similarly they cannot prove the real uh, ignorance also so here it says kahi sajaya na hone hoyate swatah nene shunya chi devangane pramanasi that which does not undergo any modifications that which does not know itself in the courtyard of that divine truth all the means of knowledge become null and void so i think we saw this last week the self is that which does not modify hmm? modification means birth growth disease decay and death that is modification self does not go through what do you think you are going through i am getting old i am hungry i think my memory is becoming less because i think i am going to die i think i want to die quickly not slowly or hey there that trap goes on the the self is that which is not which does not modify so you are that in essence who is modification free so disidentify with everything meaning do not be disturbed by all the modifications disidentify doesn't mean running away that the thoughts of modifications don't even come in your mind no they will you cannot escape from it then what do we have to do do not react remain equanimous rise above rise above the atman is not born he does not die he does not spring from anything and no nothing springs from him unborn eternal everlasting ancient he is not slain although the body is slain the atman is not born it's birthless he does not die he is deathless that which is birthless and deathless has to be infinite without a beginning and without an end he did not spring from anything that's why this idea is given this verse is mantra is given purna mada purna vidam if at all you do imagine that something has there is cause and effect then what is that cause and effect like 
that from that complete atma uh, reality something came out if you believe in this that from mother the child comes out from the seed the plant comes out from the sun the light day comes so we we attribute cause and effect for everything in this creation and that habit goes to the reality also so if at all you think in that manner from that reality if something came out if you believe that way whatever came out it is also complete and what is left behind is also complete understood yes you cannot understand this <laughs> this you cannot understand this you have not understood anything because this is out of your uh, mental imagination <laughs> so he did not spring from anything because he is complete he is one without a second so if he is one without a second how can there be anything else apart from it nothing sprang from him so it seems it seems that from the water the expanse of water the waves sprouted but is actually something happening your eyes are looking at a particular form but when you touch that form what are you touching tasting smelling feeling only water so what do our upnish upnishad say asti bhati priya nama roop this is the world it asti bhati priya is sachidanand and the world part is which you are experiencing the coming and going that is nama roop without the asti bhati priya without the reality the name and form have got no meaning but the reality can be without name and form so where is the name and form of the wave where is the name and form of the ornament it's existing in its own absence so from the reality nothing has come out no the reality has not come out of anything and nothing has come out of reality is just playing with itself but when we move around in the world we don't we are not playing with ourselves we have an agenda i have to achieve this i have to do that i have to do this i have to do that unborn eternal everlasting ancient he is not slain although the body is slain so that which is complete how can it die if the wave dies huh he is not slain although the body is slain what is the body the form of the wave what is the body the form of the ornament what is the body the form of the mud called pot that can be broken the wave dies the ornament die uh, melts the mud pot breaks but does the mud break no when the ornament melts does the gold melt no gold remains the same as gold when the wave dies does the water die no then where is this feeling coming that when i when this body dies i will die wrong conclusion in life but i can't think about my that i am the deathless principle it is very difficult then accept that this is the nature of body birth growth disease decay and death this is the nature of body and remain undisturbed when you remain undisturbed for some time again i'm going into here we are talking about ignorance and i'm going into 
for reality. So, then you, when enough momentum is created or abidance is there or non-disturbance is there from the changing modifications, then by grace you will be pulled back into, your, into it's just a word, huh? you will be pulled back, you will be absorbed. Or you will rediscover that you are the unchanging one. The fire can never know its own own heat. The eyes can see them cannot see themselves. The mind cannot perceive itself. In the same way, the Atma Tattva cannot be known by itself. But that does not mean that it is ignorance. That because of which every where every pramana means of knowledge has got its authority. How can it fall under the purview of any of the pramanas? This we saw in Kathopanishad in the last, chap last chapter. The eyes, they can illuminate the whole world, but they cannot illumine themselves. Are the eyes disturbed by the coming and going of the colors and forms? No. Are the ears disturbed by the coming and going of the sound stimuli? No. And so on with others. Similarly, just as the eyes cannot see themselves, ears cannot hear themselves, two points we said, they don't get disturbed and they cannot know themselves. Nor can they know the source behind, the cause behind, which is the mind. Similarly, is the mind disturbed by the thoughts? No, mind goes on. In the mind only the waking thoughts and the dream thoughts and the absence of the both. It keeps coming, happening daily. It's happening. Is the mind disturbed? No. See? So mind is also not disturbed by the thoughts. But we live only disturbance, with only disturbance, because we are identified with modifications. Don't identify, accept, this is how it is. Eyes are undisturbed by the stimuli, mind is undisturbed by the thoughts. In intellect is undisturbed by the appearance of I, 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 I again and again. So be the undisturbed I. But instead, this I identifies with the thoughts, identifies with the stimuli and creates a havoc for itself. In the same way, the Atma Tattva cannot know by, cannot be known by itself. So who knows that the stimuli are illumined by the senses? I know. Who knows that the eyes are not, vision is not disturbed by the stimuli? I know. Who knows that the mind is not disturbed by the thoughts, that it is continuously allowing the thoughts to come and go, I know. Who knows that every time, with every thought, the eye is coming up and then dissolving, then again the eye is coming up, then it is dissolving. Who is illuminating all this? That has to be me. It cannot be someone outside of me. Be that one who's in whose presence the I thought is coming and going, objective thought is coming and going. The moment we take the position of I, we have dug a grave for ourselves. And it is because of that, the, what is the praman here? What is the authority? Intellect is the authority for decision and conviction. Mind is the authority of uh, uh, for thoughts. 
and uh, emotions. The senses are the authority for seeing, hearing, touching, feeling, tasting. It is talking about these authorities. And all these authorities, they can function only when the consciousness is there. I am that consciousness. Which one? Unborn, eternal, everlasting, ancient. The problem is we don't accept ourselves as that. Yeah, that is good. That was very interesting. We get these type of comments. You are not doing scripture a favor. You are not. We are not doing Naneshwar Maharaj a favor by passing a comment. Yeah, that is very interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Kya kar liya? Kya ukhar liya? The so all the pramanas are in the presence of the all the authorities are fun, can function only in the presence of consciousness. They cannot function independently. The pramana vichara becomes null and void in the courtyard of the divine truth. All the pramanas disappear because the pramanas gain their authority from the truth. Meaning, when the eyes are illuminating the world, when the vision is illuminating the colors and form, when it tries, when it attempts at looking at itself in that coming back to the source, the vision, all the variety of colors and forms become null and void. Exactly the same way, when the mind is trying to look for its own source, all the thoughts become null and void, automatically silence. Then all the pramanas disappear and this is happening to us every day. Only thing is, it is not happening consciously, it is happening unconsciously at the relative level. When we go to sleep. In this way, Naneshwar Maharaj tries to make the make the seeker supportless to discover that I am the support of everything, I am not the supported to go beyond the limitations of any pramana. Don't live at the mercy of the senses and the mind and the intellect. This is the leap of faith that we need to invoke within. That leap of faith it will happen even if we don't have the experience we give ourselves a benefit of doubt that it is a possibility. And when we are continuously contemplating as Jnaneshwar Maharaj is indicating, then by grace we will transcend. Only by grace. But that does not mean we wait, keep waiting. Well, waiting is the best thing. That is the Nandi Maharaj. See, give up the addiction of living at the sensory sensory level or at the faculty level. Recognize all the faculties are functioning only because the consciousness is and that consciousness I am. Rather, rather than that, what is our approach? I have to think, I think I'm losing my mind. I think I'm getting a disease of called dementia. I think I'm becoming unhealthy. My this is hurting, my that is hurting. This disease is coming, that disease is coming. Where is the attention? Not on consciousness, on the body. 
बिफोर आई कुड ईट टेन चपाती नाव आई ईट ओनली हाफ अ चपाती वॉट इज हैपनिंग आई थिंक आई एम गोइंग टू समथिंग इज नॉट राइट इन साइड वेर इज द अटेंशन ऑन द मॉडिफिकेशन इट रिक्वायर्स ओनली इन अ क्वाइट माइंड ओनली इन एन इक्वेनिमस माइंड ओनली इन अ माइंड विच इज नो लॉन्गर सबसर्वियंट टू द इंटेलेक्ट टू द माइंड टू द सेंसेस टू द वर्ल्ड कैन दिस स्टेटमेंट मेक अ make a make a, make a have a meaning for that person what is that i am the support of everything i am not the supported we live with the premise that this world was there before i was born before this body was born because and this thought comes only because of our identification with the body so what is its conclusion when this when i go away the world will continue to be and then what comes oh it's such a big world it's such a huge world i have got i am only a minuscule person one person in this 8 billion people i am a nobody i am nothing and go into depression but the same thought i am nothing yahoo in the presence of the in the presence of the infinite self in the presence of the universal self ego has got no meaning if you take it that way fantastic no depression because the whole problem is we believe we are someone be nobody everything will be sorted by itself but we keep insisting i am so and so i am this i am that i am rich i am poor i am old i am wise i am this i am intellectual i am emotional i am a waker i am a dreamer i am a sleeper and every role that you start accepting yourself to be your ego is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger and as long as i i am somebody problems will continue be a nobody there is nothing to continue <laughs> you are free in this way nyaneshwar maharaj expresses certain key in thoughts in this ovi he takes the absolute view of the truth echoing the thought from kathopanishad truth is that which does not suffer any modifications it is vikara rahita vikar modification rahita free without without modifications the six modifications that the gross body undergoes asti jayati vardhati vardhate viparani mate uh, apakshiyate uh, vinash vinashyati vinashyati iti sad vikaravat etat sthulam shariram these are the modifications of the gross body are totally ruled out in the pure self we have been talking about that only i think we did this last week but anyway in the sentence hoya hoya te hoya te swatah nene he is refuting the shunyavad which takes the view that nothing is and therefore ignorance is the final truth shunyavad insists that there is nothing there is absence there is void we do not we do not hear nanashur maharaj he refutes that no in your presence 
the mind has become empty before it was activated now it is unactivated before there was variety now there is zero but this variety and zero is happening in your presence and therefore this uh, that ignorance is the cause of everything is not accepted you are everything finally at the other extreme he denies dvaita vada where the world is taken as the reality which is independent of the subject the world is taken as the reality independent of the subject this is now dvaita bhavana that also the nyaneshwar maharaj is not accepting why he is not accepting we also should not because our our goal is to be the to be that which is whole which is complete which is unborn which is undying and if we create a separation between us me the consciousness and the world and start thinking that the world is uh uh the this world is the reality and i am only a t only a uh, only a, a small part of minuscule part of it this nyaneshwar maharaj is not accepting he is not accepting that the world is separate from the uh from the consciousness and we have seen the example before uh, lo- long time before not only here in other scriptures also yet just as the whole world is projected out of the mind in the dream similarly the whole world is projected out of the mind which is nothing but consciousness in the waking also we we have created the division because of our crystallization of our personality the division of me versus the world and taken a wrong conclusion that this world is bigger i am small this should turn change i am the source how just like the dream world i was the source i am not affected by the coming and going of the dream the moment i wake up it has zero value for me if i wake up from the waking world it will have zero value for me therefore why should i invest in the waking world invest in the consciousness invest in the co- in being rather than in the uh, inert thus in this analysis of ajnana he demolishes both the shunyavada and the dvaitavada shunyavada the nothing is everything has come from nothing and when everything goes away what remains is nothing we don't it is very similar to vedanta we don't appreciate that conclusion not accepted and dvaita vada that the world is separate from me who me the conscious me this also we do not accept to establish this he continues ase mahana vas ya joge na chare kir aage pari nahi lage odaveti he says that the self exists cannot be asserted objectively and therefore it is it is not need not necessarily be said this we have said many times but again
that the self exists cannot be talked about, cannot be communicated, cannot be asserted objectively. What do you mean by objectively? Through thoughts. But then why are we studying the scriptures and communicating and listening? Because we are not convinced yet. <laughs> <laughs> or the other way, positive way, for the joy of it. Why does the ocean produce waves? Oh, for the joy of it, no purpose. Then why are we studying? For the joy of it. There is no one straight answer. That the self exists cannot be asserted objectively. So if you cannot logically, thought, uh, thoughtfully come to a conclusion that the self is through the thoughts, then what is there need to say that, uh, uh, that it is not also, that it, is, uh, it does not exist? Don't say anything. Just be. Because the moment we say something, remember in the previous chapter or previous to previous, uh, previous chapter, what did he say? If you use the word Sat, a Sat is created. If you use the word Chit, a Chit is created. If you use the word Suk, uh, Dukh is created. But because you don't want to use the word because some opposite is created does not mean that you are not. The Atma Tattva cannot be explained by Asti, Nasti, Pratyaya. The Atma Tattva, the conscious self, cannot be explained through words. So what have the all the words gelled down to is and is not? Then why are we using is and is not so many times in other scriptures we are used? Why? To convince ourselves. To logically wean our mind away from or re uh, look at the data that we have accepted as real. We say this book is, we say this uh, laptop is. If it is, then it should live uh, continuously, eternally, but that does not happen. The book will go out of existence, the laptop will go out of existence. We say I am, but the body will go out of existence. Then where has I am gone? So take a chill pill, think about it. What are you attributing isness to? Is your, con is your understanding clear? Are you still objective in your approach? So the Atma Tattva, the truth, the conscious self cannot be called as is or is not. This is the same as the previous chapter, Sat Asat. So why Sat is being used? Why Is is being used? To cancel the Is not. Then what remains after cancellation is the truth and that you are. For example, when a flower is, say, is held in one hand, one says the flower is Asti Pratyaya. When the flower is taken away, it is said the flower is not nasti pratyaya. Paper is, paper is not. <laughs> is and is not. Wherever there is mind, this play of is and is not. Wherever there are thoughts, the play of 
thought and no thought this game will continue in duality duality cannot remaining in duality we cannot establish the reality where are we talking in duality where are we listening in duality remaining in duality we cannot establish the reality communication is important but ultimately until unless we do not abide in that one that we already are if these words are not able to are not helping us to be subjective subjective i cannot make you subjective the no scripture can make you subjective going from tamas to rajas to sattva this is at the relative level it's becoming subjective but it is not the eternal subject it's not the eternal truth we have to get out of this loop of thinking and not thinking of isness and not isness not is we have to get out of this loop this loop is only in the mind and you are beyond the mind you are transcendental to the mind the atma tattva cannot be categorized in this way as is or is not na sat na tat asat uchchate but it is that because of which both the presence the isness and the absence the is notness are established exactly the same words now when we are talking here about the isness and the is notness it is the relative isness and the is notness when i say is that is is a thought you have to go beyond the thought this paper is this paper is not if i keep remaining go oh, where has the paper gone i want my paper. like a small child i want my tie i want my tie we go on without i want my thought i want my thought i want my objective thought without that i'm going crazy i'm going empty i don't know who i am anymore very good point yesterday one amma came to the sanskrit class and she has had some medical issues she's and uh, uh, some surgery in the brain or whatever and uh, when i ask questions she panics not even ask question we are going one by one by one now you do the next sentence aham pathami i have to study so suddenly sometimes she looks at it and she goes into panic oh i can't remember i can <laughs> and she just really can't see her that way and i have noticed that and i say okay ma you come back later you do the next one i go to the next one now do i keep telling her that this is a big problem with you that you are not being alert that you are not good enough that you have to take control of your mind or do i make her understand how her mind is functioning if i say the previous words her inspiration in life will keep ebbing away so our job is to keep inspired okay if you are forgetful or the mind is playing that way because of the neural connections are not happening for whatever reasons it's okay but you know the answer you know only at that moment you get into a zone of i have to answer oh i know i but 
the thoughts are going faster and suddenly there is blank because she is not able to slow down. Then she said, Swamiji, it's not slowing down. There are no thoughts only. And then I panic that why there are no thoughts? Why I'm not going? I know the answer, but why the answer is not coming? I said, good. Very good. Because if I say it is wrong, it is a disease, it is a problem, for whole life she is going to be dependent then. If naturally the nature has made her mind not to well up thoughts, it is good. She has to accept first that it is a good condition. If she keeps saying that it is a bad condition, then problem. Then she will go into depression. But if she accepts it, so it is how it is, not even good. It is how it is. Now what can I do with it? How can I? This is how it is. Then who am I? What is my position? It is only mind which is thinking or not thinking. Why am I getting disturbed? And then she started crying. Oh, Swamiji, this is that. I said, okay, okay. This is, it's not her, it's us also. We think we are intelligent and because we can articulate, we can explain. But if all this is not leading to the inner stillness, all this talking and listening is not leading to inner stillness, even while it is happening, we have lost the plot. And scriptures, here they say uh, something, somewhere else they will say something, contradiction. And people keep arguing and then <laughs> if they come, come to you, uh, you also don't know the answer, go on story over then. It's not that you need to know the answer, but you need to transcend above the questions and no questions, answers and no answers then whatever that person needs to hear will come out of the mouth. <clears throat> so one can neither say that Atma is nor Atma is not. It is an existence which cannot be associated with any activity but because of which all activities are possible. What is the ultimate activity? Thought activity. Because thought alone, body is a thought, senses are a thought, brain is a thought, conviction is a thought, emotion is a thought, Satchit Anand is a thought, Asat Achit Dukkham is a thought, the whole world is a thought, space, air, fire, water is a thought, all their combinations are a thought, Om is a thought, all the 52 alphabets are a thought. Everything is thought. And here Jnaneshwar Maharaj saying is that this Atma does not come under the purview of any of these thoughts. It is beyond the thought. It, it is an existence which cannot be associated with any activity. And what is the activity of the thought? Coming into existence, staying for some time and then going away, there is movement. Movement is called activity. Movement is called activity. Activity begins, activity ends. Consciousness does not begin, does not end. Therefore, the word consciousness cannot completely define the consciousness. It's only a tool to focus our mind. That's all. No language lends itself to describe the Atma as either manifest or unmanifest 
because both are from the relative standpoint from the point of view of the ocean it is ocean alone but if the attention is also on the waves then qualifying statements need to be made that in the waves also the ocean is wo oh, wave does not have an independent existence apart from the ocean ocean is pervading the waves we forget that part here we appreciate when i say that you say yes similarly this body breath mind intellect is pervaded by the material called the pure consciousness this we forget the wave is nothing but water we accept ornament is nothing but gold we accept but body breath mind intellect is nothing but the pure consciousness we don't accept and because we don't accept then we seek then we do sadhana because we have created a dist- created a distance where there is no distance what is the distance between the ornament and the gold how much sadhana does the ornament need to do to be the gold does it need to destroy its form in order to be the gold or in spite of the form it is the gold same story for you you don't need to destroy the form but you don't need to indulge in it also then how will it happen except you are the gold except you are the pure consciousness and if you say no it is so difficult then it is difficult i am coming closer to the consciousness then you have created distance where there is no distance see in this way the atma tattva cannot be established as is or is not therefore what whatever is said about the parmatma is not the truth whatever is said about the parmatma is not the truth therefore only our scriptures the upanishads have the magnanimity to say have the courage and the daring to say that when you reach when, when once one abides in the self even we have to be discarded one has to give up the words to abide all the scriptures can do is take you to the climax can take you to the threshold and once you enter the sanctum sanctorium or once you be the pure the atman that you are in essence then whether you like it or not the mind will the words will have no meaning therefore whatever is said about the atma parmatma is not the truth anything that one says about the world which is not the reality also cannot be real so all words are limited how can they define the unlimited words are modifying how can they define which is beyond modification this thought can be comprehended by a seeker only if nothing in the world holds any meaning for him and this is where our problem is we want to hold on to the world and we want to be the truth we want to hold on to the world we want to hold on to our identity as a seeker we want to hold on to be the body the father the mother the daughter the sister the friend the shishya and 
we want to seek the truth we have to give up all identity for that matter to give up all identity you have to drop the world from your mind just as in deep sleep allow it to be dropped away one has to have the inner strength now where are we therefore whatever is ha huh, this we did anything that one says about the world which is not the reality also cannot be real this uh, so whatever our judgments about the world about the people about the situation about the events about the past about the future about the waking dream deep sleep all are out of our head imagination they are not real just as ornament is essentially gold wave is essentially water the whole world is essentially brahman the 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 reality and everything that you are talking about the world it's only a out of your head this thought can be comprehended by a seeker only if nothing in the world holds any meaning for him one has to have the inner strength to withstand the force of that understanding the outward pull that the world is real that the relations are real that the husband is real that the wife is real that the grandchild is real this pull will keep it will keep pulling you back tato yuddhaya yuddhaswa this is the war that is go that that is going on in the mind transcend be like krishna in the war it's all his play don't be the arjuna here we are not talking about being the arjuna be the krishna so that statement by krishna to arjuna is to an individual तथो युद्धा युद्ध स्व न शोचती न कांक्षती इक्वैमिटी डज नॉट जस्ट हैपन वेन वी रिमेन अनडिस्टर्ब बाय जॉयज एंड सॉरोज देन इक्वैनिमिटी हैपन्स वेन वी रिमेन इक्वैनिमस इन स्पाइट ऑफ विक्ट्री एंड डिफीट देन इक्वैनिटी हैपन्स इक्वैनिटी इज ऑल्सो स्टेट ऑफ माइंड that mind which is not reacting to every stimuli stimuli are always of opposite nature and this is not one day you will practice it will happen it has to be continuous 24 by 7 awareness of this has to be there samatvam yoga uchchate samatvam yoga uchchate and as just as people who are taking the name of the lord the mind throws up all the difficulties memories to dis- so that well it's not uh, the, why because it's losing control it doesn't want to lose control exactly the same way when we are contemplating or we are being when the mind is becoming quiet and the waking ego is losing its control under the force of the sleep and it holds on and it holds on no 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 i like it but i have to do this i have to do that i have to do this and because it has not lost dropped the world effortlessly it was still trying to hold on to it then the dream happens for such people 
unfinished business in the world expresses their dreams. Then when they are vomited out of the mind, then sleep comes. So same is ours. We want to take the name of the Lord. Alert from Google password required. But still we have not dropped our attachment, our indulgence in the world. So it, even with the eyes closed, mala in the hand, remembering the Lord or sitting in meditation, for a few seconds, beautiful, after that a havoc in the mind, a storm, a thought storm, a, a whirlwind, sometimes even a tsunami. Why? And then we say, oh, mind is too difficult to handle because you did, you are not interacting with the world properly. First step you are not doing. Straight away you want to jump into meditation. It will be like that. One has to have the inner strength to withstand the force of that understanding. And that understanding is Transcendence. The thinking cannot take you there. The spiritual path is not for the weak. Na, I am Atma Balahi Nena Labhyaha. Huh? The spiritual path is not for the weak. It is for the courageous one. And the courage is not required to establish the world. Courage is required to be the infinite consciousness that we essentially are. Presence or absence of any object or person makes no difference. Once one, once one is established in the absolute standpoint, so When we transcend the duality, we are the unity, we are the one. From oneness point of view, there is no duality. There is no impact of the thoughts or no thoughts. There is no impact of the mind. Just as on the mirror, there is no impact of that which is projected on it. Similarly, mind which is essentially consciousness, there is no impact of thoughts which are appearing and disappearing. Just as there is no impact on the water, infinite water, of the waves coming and going. There is no impact on the mud of the pots coming and going. There is no impact of the, on the gold of the ornaments coming and going. Gold remains the same, water remains the same, mud remains the same, consciousness remains the same, that you are. So this perverted conclusions that we have come into, come in our life to, what is the perverted conclusion? I am an individual, even more perverted, I am a husband or a wife or a son or a daughter, even more perverted. This is perversion because you are not being who you are. Identified with something and considering that to be you, that is perversion only. If you can digest it, good. Otherwise, delete that sentence. Enjoy the ignorance. <laughs> Presence or absence of any object or person makes no difference. Do we have the courage? People will misunderstand you when you start, when you are in that type of disposition. 
पीपल विल मिस अंडरस्टैंड यू योर ओन विल मिस अंडरस्टैंड यू बट द स्ट्रेंथ टू गो थ्रू दैट इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू बींग द प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस is directly proportional to being if i take one step below to be focused and contemplating on that pure consciousness in spite of what the world is throwing at you whatever the people in the dream were judging you uh, uh, pointing fingers at you all that becomes null and void the moment you wake up you can't even remember their face they can't you can't even remember how many kids you had what your wife or husband looked like how you look like nothing you can remember exactly the same way when we wake up to be the consciousness that we are this whole waking world will become null and void the self exists independent of everything and can never be lost कोण से असणे नवीन असे काही न देखतांची दिसे हे आथी तरी काही से हरतले पणा कॅन दॅट हुज सॉरी कॅन दॅट हुज एक्झिस्टन्स इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ एनिथिंग and exists even in the absence of everything be called non existence just common sense that in whose presence the presence of the world waking and dream and the absence of the two worlds the deep sleep happens can that be non existent can that be a void this is the vyoma vadvada vyoma vada the nihilist theory is it possible to be non existence in front of non existence appearance and disappearance is happening stupid or what that which is self asserted and self existing which does not exist because of something that which is present manifest even in deep sleep when there is nothing to experience where there is only nothingness how can one say that atma is not that only ignorance is the reality i think this thought had come before i exist at two levels one is the absolute existence second is relative in relation to son wife etc the absolute existence as a human being does not suffer but the one which is relative has problems so which one are we are we the gaunatma are we the mithyatma or are we the mukhyatma at any given moment at any given moment lord shri krishna he is very clear he is the absolute he is the totality and as the totality he knows the whole world is in him and he is in the whole world and therefore he was able to put it, put the perfect sequence 
of the 18 chapters in front of Arjuna because he has the big picture. But while he is explaining that big picture to Arjuna, the, the sequence of sadhana and slowly molding his mind to expand, he has never forgotten that he is the Absolute. He has never forgotten that. We have forgotten. We have forgotten. Let us focus our attention on the pure consciousness that I am. Let us remove the attention from others so far as our life is concerned. Let us die to the others and wake up to the eternal I. This living in death is Ishwara Darshana. Spirituality is conversa conversion of endurance into enjoyment. Living in death means when the mind becomes empty, you remain awake. Mind is becoming empty every night. We keep telling that is the window of opportunity. Catch it. In this manner, let us die to the others, meaning let us die to the differences, let us die to the sense of otherness. And how do differences and otherness appear? They appear as thoughts. Let us die to the thoughts. Let's wake up to the consciousness that we are. How? In spite of thoughts, you be the consciousness. That is the death of the thought. If you want it more in a language of acceptance, when you are available to the consciousness as the consciousness, then you are no longer giving value and importance to the thought. So the then you are dead to the thoughts. So in this way, spirituality is conversion of endurance into enjoyment. Dhairya, forbearance. Dhira purushaha, he who endures. joyfully, not complainingly. And that's the whole trick, whole knack of going through life joyfully. Life will always throw the opposite. Sometimes success, sometimes failure. Sometimes health, sometimes ill health. Sometimes joy, sometimes sorrow. You remain in bliss <laughs> in spite of everything. Enough for today. Just sit quietly for a moment. Om Purnamada Purnamedam Purnahat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om
れよ。